Hello everyone, welcome back to the Good Earth Podcast. This is Jake Martin again with Christians on Campus and today we have three very special guests with us. I'd just like to go ahead and introduce them. I've got John Rattan. Good morning everybody. I have Tom Wolf. It's good to be here. And I have Kyle Rockin. Hello, nice to be here. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, so for those of you listening, you may already know this, but if not, Christians on Campus is an outreach of the church in Fairborn, and John, Tom, and Kyle were there at the church in Fairborn's uh, beginnings, and so we just like to take a step back from our usual um, episodes and do something a little different, go through some of the history of the church in Fairborn. So maybe I could go ahead and pass it to John if you want to kick us off. Certainly. Thank you, Jake. Um, the history of the church in Fairborn um, goes back to the middle 1980s and uh, I moved to Dayton in the fall of 1986 um, coming from Ohio State University and uh, Kyle who's with us this morning I think you moved back to your hometown of Brookville in 1987 yes Is that right 1987 so um, I was living in Dayton at that time. Kyle was in Brookville, and we were uh, we we met each other at Ohio State. So that's where our connection was. And of course, I came down here um, to go to school. I went to medical school at Wright State University, and as a, a first year medical student, I was actually freshly baptized and and, and a fresh turn to the Lord at that time. Actually, Kyle and I got baptized at the same time. Yes. It was the summer of 1986. I think July 12th. July 12th, 1986. 1986. So we got baptized on a, a Christian retreat at uh, Houston Woods, which is at, uh, the lake there is Acton Lake. Acton Lake, Houston Woods State Park. Houston Woods State Park, which is in down near Oxford, Ohio. And so we, uh, we happened to get baptized at the same time in the lake there in, in the summer. So that was... Uh, that was kind of, you talk about the origin or the beginning of anything. Yeah. It really yeah. starts with our believing in the Lord. Yes. Our, our, our being obedient to being baptized. And then our beginning to follow the Lord. And yeah. so here we were, or here I was in Dayton, Ohio, going to Wright State Medical School. And uh, just learning, just learning, learning the Lord, learning uh, how to have fellowship. And, and Kyle being in Brookville, we began to have some communication and and periodic fellowship. Uh, Brookville is still about a 30 to 35 minute drive from where I was, but uh, I would drive out to Brookville, he would drive into Dayton, we'd have some fellowship. And, right. and we, um, we uh, that first year, uh, well, he, turned, he moved down in 1987, so the first year of him being in the area, uh, that coming winter, December of 1987, we, we together went to a, a, uh, a live uh, semi-annual training um, and at that time uh, it, was, it was the first time that we had done something like this as a Bible training. Right. The uh, name of, the, uh, of the, uh, the topic of that training was the scriptural way to meet and to serve. And it was a 30 message long training over a 10-day period yes so it was very intense three messages a day for 10 days but in that mess in that training uh i think i could speak for kyle and myself we got very clear about the scriptural way to meet yes and as opposed to maybe what you see today among among uh, most christian groups and uh there, there is a, there is a way that the Bible tells us how to meet. That's right. And, and, and particularly on this, this training, I remember the brother sharing that, and this is an Old Testament verse. I, I think it's in First Kings. I could be wrong, but it talked about in this verse, uh, there was a, an adjustment, or you could say a little bit of a rebuke from the Lord to the children of Israel. That they were they were proceeding or going along according to the custom of the nations. Of the nations, yes. The custom of the nations, and that 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 was a that was something the Lord adjusted them about. And the brother who shared in this training made it clear that even today's way, you could say the traditional way, of meeting and serving 
in the Lord is according not to the Bible, but according to the custom of the nations. Right. Right. And that point was really brought home in that training. And uh, following that training, I don't want to go into great detail on that training, but following that training, I got more clear regarding I should be doing something in this direction, the direction that's scriptural and, and the way to meet and also in the way to serve. And so the Bible became really living during that training Absolutely, time. very living. And uh, Kyle and I came away from that training and we just had some feeling. Lord, what about the Dayton area? What about the Dayton area? That's right. Right? Where we live. Where, where we live. How do we put into practice what we just heard? Yeah. That we want to meet and serve in a scriptural way, according to the Bible. Amen. Absolutely according to the revelation in the Bible. That's right. So uh, we had some feeling, well, let's, let's consider where we should meet in such a way. And, and, uh, and we were beginning to have more and more fellowship. And, and we had other brothers that came down to this area that met with us. And we had a lot of prayer. And we drove around the whole we Dayton area, the whole area, all the different cities, all the different places. And, and we, we were just in two cars. We had enough brothers, we were in two cars yeah. just driving around. And so at that time, there wasn't like communication ability between the cars. I don't even think that was before cell phones. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have cell phones. In <laughs> we 19, had to stop yeah, and talk to each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is 1987 eight, and even early 1988. I'm talking about now, actually 1988. Very early 1988. Yeah, very early 1988. So we didn't have a way to communicate between cars. <laughs> but we were praying in, in the cars together, driving around the area. Yes. And, and then when we stopped, we had some fellowship. And there was just a a real sweet feeling for the city of Fairborn. And so I know I'm giving a big introduction here and you'll have to do a lot of editing probably, but no, anyhow. this is great, this is it's, great. It's, we had, uh, it, it was interesting, um, but because Fairborn in, a, in and of itself is not this attractive metropolis with, you know, landscape that's beautiful and or even am right. amenities and businesses that are so attractive. It's 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 an old Air Force town. You know, that's nothing correct. nothing that attractive at that, that time. Or beauteous or attractive yeah. that you would move here. Yeah, and Wright State University is here and, and it still was pretty young at it that was time. Still young at that time. Twenty five right. years old maybe which is young for a university. So we uh, but we had some feelings so uh, you know, I don't want to go into great detail on that, but we did have some feeling about Fairborn. We did. And, and, and what we heard in, the, in that training that we just had in that winter time was that the, the church life, the Christian life is to be lived out in the church life. And what does that church life look like? And you just go to the scriptures. Yes. Paul wrote to the church in Rome. He wrote an epistle to the church in Ephesus. He wrote an epistle to the church in Corinth. The believers in any city met as the church in that city. Right. Very simple. Very simple. Inclusive of all the and, Christians. And we and realized how complicated That's the right. situation is today. It's not that simple. Very right. complicated, complex, and divisions between uh, be dear, genuine believers that, Absolutely. That, that are unnecessary. So to, to, to come and agree upon and have a feeling about a city for the Lord to have a testimony of himself right. through his believers was uh, really critical in our, in our consideration at that time. Without any, so to speak, traditions or encumbrances other than just being in a city as believers in Christ to be the church in that city. So you must have had some kind of touch with this way of meeting to have even um, yes. been inspired to want to practice this what what yeah. uh, was your prior experience uh, leading up to good question going to this Christian training and right good question good question and yes um, my first year in medical school here at Wright State actually I was going from place to place to place I went to places that were more of a Pentecostal direction, and more of a, a just a free group of Christians meeting here, and different. I was I was looking, I was searching because it's very confusing when you're a new believer. Absolutely. To know well, where do I go? What do I do? You know, and uh, 
it's it's like an ice cream shop with how many flavors? Baskin Robbins. So maybe, 31. 31. Yeah, 31, 31 flavors. And now we know it's more than 31. Maybe, yeah, maybe right. some of you in this never have heard of Baskin Robbins. I don't even know if they're still in business, but Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors of ice cream. And that was, in my view at that time, that was Christianity. Yeah. Not knocking the dear believers who were in wherever they're meeting, they're precious, precious Absolutely. Christians. Absolutely. But if we're honest, we have to admit it's confusing. Yes. We have to admit it for it's confusing. It is confusing. Mm-hmm. So what? Th- which are the thirty-one flavors? Do you try? You know. So I, that that's the background a little bit in my experience that I and uh, and and I found that it was I was rather disappointed going place to place. You know, to to find much in the way of genuine uh, depth of fellowship and 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 f- an emphasis on really the word, the scriptures, the word. So, so that was a little bit of the background of, uh, you might say I was ripe to hear such a, a, a training on the scriptural way to meet and to serve. Because the one thing we have as believers is we have the Bible. Yeah, that's right. We have the word of God. Yes. Yeah, that, there's no right. other book that we can go to, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's not an, and there's not an extra book that tells you how to meet, how to serve. There's not yeah. an extra book that tells you how to practice you know, it's, we have the Bible. Yes, yeah. that's, that's right. That's it. That's our that's anchor. Right. Mm-hmm. That's our that's our foundation. Our blueprint. That's our blueprint. It's that's everything. Right. So that's right. yeah. Mm-hmm. So this this became uh, really clear to me that that mm-hmm. that's that's what we have. What has God given us? He's given us His Word, mm-hmm. and so that becomes critical in, in all we do, in all that we do, how we meet, how we serve, how we live, how we behave ourselves and conduct ourselves as believers. So, anyhow, yeah, that's a little bit of background of, of getting to the point where Kyle and I moved in together, had an apartment in Fairborn, based upon our prayer and our fellowship. And it was quite amazing that in two separate cars, with no cell phones, when we pulled over to a parking lot and began to talk, it was unanimous. There was a real strong feeling in both cars. We think, we think something in Fairborn. We Absolutely. feel the Lord has some heart from Fairborn. Yeah. So we just followed that leading that the Lord had to, had to do and... and, and, and and operate in, in two cars separate from one another. And we, we felt, you know, the number two in the Bible indi- indicates testimony, right? So there was a testifying, <laughs> right. there was a testifying of there two is. cars mm-hmm. full of brothers that, that Fairborn was yeah. on God's heart. Absolutely. And, that, and that's what we wanted. We want God's heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We want what's on his heart. As believers, what else is there, right? Yeah. That's exactly So right. that, that was uh, really critical in, in the early days. Um, of, of how the church really began in, in Fairborn. I was hoping I could hear from you guys just a little bit more on this word training um, because I haven't heard it practiced that often among Christians to, to use this word training, coming together as believers to be trained, even even in the Bible. Um, I just didn't know if maybe someone could give me a little bit of a I don't know, some insight into that, that word. It's yeah. just not that commonly used among maybe, believers. Maybe Tom, who went to, went to the training. Sure, sure. Um, well, uh, so would you like me to just jump right into the matter of training or share about how, uh, what brought me to that point? Yeah, sure. It could be personal experience. could be mm-hmm. um, something from the Bible or mm-hmm. even just um, like the different kind of uh, things you've experienced growing mm-hmm. up as mm-hmm. a as a believer. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll I'll address that part first of all. Sure. I, I was not a believer. Um, I, yeah, I was raised um, um, Roman Catholic. Uh, um, that was my upbringing, and so I, I never knew the Lord growing up except for going to mass weekly. Uh, and I met the brothers uh, when um, I was a incoming freshman at Wright State. Uh, in the fall of 88 so that's when I met a brother and um, initially he was just another student on campus so there wasn't even the thought that he was a Christian um, which was the Lord's sovereignty because back in high school and, and through my growing up I wouldn't say I was a person who was seeking the Lord as a matter of fact I would even go so far as to say God religion all of it uh, completely turned me off um, everything I had seen, none of it was attractive to me. Right. So when I met this particular Christian, um, he was just another student at Wright State. We'd see each other from time to time uh, and go our separate ways, and that was it. And it wasn't until 
um, actually um, probably around 89, 1989 is when I started to um, see him, run into him, uh, eventually uh, came out to the apartment where these two lived uh, and developed some relationship with the three of them um, in terms of uh, spending time with them and, and probably it was during 1989 that actually I received the Lord uh, in, in my spirit but I didn't know it uh, that's just I'm just guessing uh, but it wasn't until 1990 actually the spring of 1990 that I had a definite experience of salvation where I really sought the Lord out in a situation and I believe I received the Lord but to get to your question it was after um, between 1990 when I feel like I really received the Lord until the fall of 1994 that there was a lot of transactions a lot of enjoyment a lot of uh, very informal gatherings with these brothers as well as other Christians who are at Wright State that we got together we enjoyed the Lord together and even had exposure to different uh, videos um, similar to what they had experienced when they went to that that training and there was a point where I do remember watching a particular video where I saw uh, some some college graduates that were speaking the truth in the video and they spoke it very clearly they spoke it uh, referencing the word yeah and they spoke it uh, in a, in a life-giving way mm -hmm. where I felt like I was getting right. life I was right. getting fed I was being supplied and yet it was so clear so clear and irrefutable and I saw and I found out that they participated in a Bible training right. and that's what attracted me that's when inwardly I was like Lord I want to go where they're at mm -hmm. I want to I want to I want to follow these ones Amen. I want to get trained right. so that Amen. I could be useful to the Lord so that I would have a, a solid constitution of the truth and that my, you know, I would, I would go forward and never look back. And so within me, I thought, as soon as I graduate from college, I want to go to this, this Bible training. And so for me, that was my goal. As a matter of fact, that was more my goal than graduating from college. Uh, throughout my whole college career, my, my scope, my, my sights were set on going to this training. And so um, yeah. that's what I was attracted to, and that's what I wanted to do. You know, I would just add that as Christians... It's wonderful that we receive the Lord's life and he begins to live in us and, and he begins to, to grow in us. But just as a human life needs trained, you, you know, with little kids, you're training them from the very beginning. You're training them to say thank you, right. to say I'm sorry, to uh, you're training them to how to eat properly. Right. You're training them how to go to sleep at a proper time. So many things we, we don't realize are put into us humanly as we grow up under our parentage. The same way with the divine life. It's the same. Absolutely. It's a life Absolutely. that needs training. It needs shaped. It needs perfected. Yes. And so we don't often think of it. Sure. That all mm -hmm. we just think, okay, I'm saved. I have fire insurance. I'm good for, you know, I'm going to go to heaven right. or whatever the thought might be. Mm -hmm. but, but, right. but actuality the Lord doesn't want to stop there. Mm -hmm. he, he wants us to be perfected in the divine life that we've received yes. to be useful. Absolutely. Because that, that training we went to was a scripture way to meet and to serve. And to serve. Right. Can just anyone <clears throat> serve God the way they want to serve God? Yes. No. Mm -hmm. God will not, will not accept any kind of service. That's correct. Mm -hmm. he, he wants a service which is according to him. Exactly. And that requires some some training absolutely right absolutely so it was it was in this kind of atmosphere and this you know having that view handling yeah. the word yeah. from the perspective of training taking all the believers who joined for it, you said it was a week long that you this was a 10 day training. 10 day yes. okay during these 10 days yes. uh handling the word with a view toward um being trained as believers to practice the yes. scriptural meeting and the scriptural service. Yes. This inspired, it was just you and Kyle that were able to yes. join this time, but coming yes. back in those two cars with other Christian brothers, mm -hmm. um, you're just realizing having some feeling for the city of Fairborn specifically mm -hmm. to start to bring in what you got from this 10-day 
Christian training sure. and put it into practice in the city of Fairborn. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, this apartment that Tom was just talking about, was, was this kind of a step that y'all took? In it was this? a major step. Yeah, it was a major step. In fact, it was in the spring of 1988 that uh, John and I felt to move in together. And uh, I still remember it here in Fairborn. And uh, it was apartment F. I call it the apartment F for faith. <laughs> we moved in together in I like faith. That. Yeah. The apartment of faith with many. Tom was the first person that came through that and got saved mm -hmm. you know, yes. at that apartment. Yeah. And we moved in together and in the realm of faith. And I think, you know, to as we moved into that apartment, I think uh, just to augment well onto what the brothers just shared, it was from that training. It wasn't just a, a Bible training, but the Bible is about a living, mm -hmm. a living, a life that you have with the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. and a life you have with other believers. Not that you just see something in the Bible and it's just me and Jesus, but what does the Lord want? Mm -hmm. How can we be useful in His hands? Mm -hmm. Not that I'm going to go do something for the Lord, but what does the Lord want to do in us? Well, He wants to be our living. As Paul shared, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live in faith. Apartment faith. I live in faith, right? right, in the Son of God, the faith of the Son of God, right? And so we wanted to have a living that lived this life. We didn't want to be just Christians um, and go to other places, but to really come together and have a life that would live Christ and serve others with this Christ and with this vision concerning the genuine ground of oneness, that we're not exclusive, just another denomination, but we come together on the ground of oneness that God, as John shared, that God has a genuine way that he wants his people to meet. One city, one church. That's not exclusive, but inclusive of all the genuine believers that are in that city. And that's what you have in Ephesus, that's what you have in Corinth, mm -hmm. those writing to the church of God in that city. Mm -hmm. It's a whole New Testament. But that to do that, there needs to be a living. Not just a bunch of activities of serving God, but a day-to-day -day living, and that's also another thing that uh, the training isn't about learning Bible verses mm -hmm. and learning the truth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely you get that in the training. Mm -hmm. But it's also about having a proper human life. Right. Living the human life by the divine life. Mm -hmm. You're taking Christ in the morning to love him and touch him and his word. The first thing, he's the source of your living. He's the source of your daily living. Then out from him being your source, you serve during that day. You go to your jobs, you go to your work, you go to school, you're, you're a father, you're a husband, you're a wife, you're taking care of children, but out of taking care of Christ in the morning, you're trained to take Christ in everything that he would live in us throughout mm -hmm. that day. Again, not doing something for God, but that Christ himself would live from within us, would Amen. be expressed. Mm -hmm. right. And not just individually, but corporately as the church and all the believers. Mm -hmm. I love That's that. the vision that we acquired mm -hmm. and that we desire to live according to God's way, God's truth, the scriptural way to meet and to serve. Has to be, he has to be the source and he actually, even in us, has to be the serving one to others. Mm -hmm. wow. Not I, but Christ has to come out. So we were being trained to live and to serve in our spirit mm -hmm. where Christ dwells. Not just in doing things what we want to do, but Christ himself is lived out through us yeah. in a corporate way as a priesthood to serve people with Christ together to shepherd them. That's the vision we had and that's where we lived. So when we moved into that apartment, that was our whole goal. Right. So as we moved into that apartment, there were ones who were on campus, students on campus. Some of us were working. John was in school. I was working, also going to school. But we contacted students at Wright State and our neighbors, mm -hmm. our neighborhood. Those in the apartments next to us, we got to meet them. The Guestmans. And our whole, the Guestmans, our next door neighbor, <laughs> family of, they had two, three children, three children. Yeah. And that we began to eventually spend time and eventually got saved yeah. through time. Because our whole desire weren't to be good people who happened to be Christians, but we wanted to live Christ. Mm -hmm. And not only live Christ, but to speak Christ to these people. Mm -hmm. And that was our desire. And the Lord. You know, on one hand, we didn't know what we were doing, but we were in faith, mm -hmm. desiring to pursue this direction mm -hmm. and stayed in good fellowship with the brothers according to God's word. And we enjoyed the Lord each day together. Our relationship had to grow. And then when Tom, like I said, coming back to Tom, he came in that apartment, 
-hmm. eventually had fellowship with us, our whole desire in contacting Tom to come to that apartment mm -hmm. was to enjoy this law, mm -hmm. enjoy the Lord. Mm -hmm. And this was brought into this vision that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So Tom, I was hoping I could pick it back up with you. Mm -hmm. um, just going back to your testimony, your experience of being in this apartment with John and Kyle, um, having a fresh appreciation for Christ and what it is to be a believer and live in the church. Uh, you mentioned there were some others with you, about nine others, and I was just curious, were they some of your fellow students from Wright State, or mm -hmm. how, did, how did you all come in contact with these? Absolutely, great question. So the one thing that this uh, brings to mind is the fact that among all of us, and, and, and I think generally there's about a dozen of us who were there uh, on day one uh, when we uh, took the ground as a church in Fairborn, but the one thing that comes to mind is kind of getting back to what uh, John was sharing in the last uh, episode is, you know, his exposure and his background. Uh, actually, a lot of us came from all kinds of backgrounds. Um, and I felt like what a testimony that was, you know. I testified that I was raised Roman Catholic, some of us Presbyterian, some Baptist. Uh, some had no quote-unquote religious background at all. That's right. uh, and so all of our experiences, our understanding, even our concepts of the Bible and the Christian life and how to serve varied person to person. Absolutely. So we all came with our history, uh, but all of us, one, one thing was that was the common denominator is we all had a seeking. And at some point we all received the Lord and were pursuing, we wanted more fellowship and, and to learn what this Christian life was all about. Absolutely. And so to answer your question, uh, among the dozen or so that were there uh, on that Septem September 15th, 1990 day, um, um, some of us, many of us were Wright State students. We were undergraduates. I don't believe any of us were graduates except John, of course, was in medical school. Uh, and there were probably a few that um, never went to Wright State. They were friends of some of us and they joined us. Uh, so we all just came together and, and um, pretty, most of us, if not basically lived in the Fairborn area or maybe a couple might have lived in Beaver Creek uh, but we all lived in a pretty close proximity uh, to campus and um, so we just felt based upon the all the the, the speaking we would heard and, and then getting into the word that um, taking the ground as the church and just meeting as simply the church uh, in the city which is Fairborn was uh, the, the, the next step of many steps to come so John, I just want to pass it to you next. Um, just seeing as how you met Tom at Wright State and some other Wright State students and then friends of friends and different ones, um, getting inspired about the city of Fairborn, practicing this way that you saw of living the church life. Um, how did you get from that inspiration to meeting Wright State students and, and, and inviting these Wright State students over to your apartment. Yes, well, fortunately we had a few, few brothers who had the time to commit to being on the campus. Um, I was a med student, so I was kind of busy and a lot of my activities were not on the campus. It was at hospitals or in the area, but there were a few brothers who could be more available and met students through their classes or just uh, eventually, uh, I believe it wasn't until 1991, we had a club on the campus. But at least in, up, up until 1990 when we first uh, came together to break bread and remember the Lord, on, like Tom mentioned, September 15th, 1990, we, uh, we did have uh, a way of at least meeting students. Um, but I, I will tell you, it, it is a very difficult thing to gradually, at, the, at, a, at a pace that's consistent with the Lord's life in us. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a very gradual and difficult thing to, to bring believers together. And even we have to be able to see the same thing. We have to be able to understand the Bible in a certain way mm -hmm. that is... Like I said before, scriptural. Mm -hmm. It's scriptural. Mm -hmm. How do you meet? Mm -hmm. It wasn't. We weren't. We weren't coming together to to try to produce a group of pastors, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, uh, and we and we were meeting in a way that it wasn't just one person 
doing all the speaking and everything. Leading the group. Yeah, because the one thing we see in the scriptural way to meet and, and to serve is that each member of the body of Christ, the church, Absolutely. functions mm -hmm. according to their measure. That's mm -hmm. correct. Whatever they have, they should function. And in, in a lot of ways, what we see today among Christian groups is that that, that little function in a very small member is either diminished or even strong, more strongly annulled. Mm -hmm. One thing we heard, one a word we learned in that training Absolutely. was annulled. Mm -hmm. The members have been annulled in a their function. function. Mm -hmm. And so um, our way of meeting was in, in a very, obviously, Tom mentioned we had mm -hmm. 12 people. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do? Have someone stand up and give a message and a sermon to 11 people? That sounds kind of ridiculous. <laughs> in your apartment. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds kind of ridiculous, right? But no, we met in a way of mutuality. Absolutely. Everybody can call a hymn. Mm -hmm. Everybody can speak a stanza of a hymn. Absolutely. Everybody can share some verse that might be connected to a stanza yeah, of a hymn. Right. And we can see what the Lord will do. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's not a pre-programmed way to come mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. and a topic we're going to discuss. We allow the Lord through the Spirit to have mm -hmm. some freedom, Absolutely. to have a way to flow, Absolutely. and to, to, to actually be the one gathering mm -hmm. us together. He's the mm -hmm. one leading that. He's the gathering one. Mm -hmm. He's the one leading us. Absolutely. And so this was, like I mentioned, this isn't easy. Mm -hmm. It's not easy because we didn't have a group of mature Christian brothers and sisters who moved to Fairborn to quote unquote plant the church. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, there wasn't I think, a migration I, right, yeah, by other yeah, churches. Yeah, yeah. I think the I think the, the under, uh, understanding among believers of of planting a church is kind of commonly understood among Christians. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that situation. Mm -hmm. And even in a sense we didn't come to try to try to do something. Right. But 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 in but in a real sense we were all young. Yeah. We're all in our twenties. Yes, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, all, right. you know, for the most part. Right. And so, um, you know, I, I don't know if that answers your question at least a little bit. It does, but, but, and, it, and it helps me even with a further question. Just that you, you guys being young at mm -hmm. the time, twenties, mm -hmm. um, and also the ones that you're meeting are, are young. Yes. Um, you didn't have some mature believers come and plant the church, but rather mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. just some. Some young ones meeting, mm -hmm. um, each one participating, doing something. Mm -hmm. um, it, was that kind of your goal and part of why you were seeking Wright State students or college mm -hmm. students is to mm -hmm. um, find some who were ready to have this kind of mutuality? Or what prompted you to go to a college campus uh, to, to find yeah. some believers yeah. who want to meet in this scriptural way? Yes. Right. right. Well, if I can sure. jump in here. Sure. You know, uh, because, of course, most of us were college students, right. um, it just made sense that we had classmates, we had um, contacts. Um, there's age. one of us yeah. that um, his mother worked at Wright State yes. in, uh, I think, the admissions department, if I remember correctly, or maybe financial aid. Yeah. And, uh, and between <laughs> the two of them, to be honest with you, we kn they knew about everybody on campus. Just Everywhere somebody. we went at Wright State, everybody knew us because of them. And um, it, so it really gave us, we had a lot of warm doors, a lot of uh, people that knew us that were, became friends of ours and uh, eventually became gospel candidates, mm -hmm. um, uh, mm -hmm. gave us the opportunity to share the gospel, share the word with them, mm -hmm. came to home, home gatherings that we had. Mm -hmm. And so um, strictly speaking, when you talk about the history of, of the club at Wright State University, it started off in a very simple way uh, up until actually 94 we didn't have a an official club on campus um, but we did have like John pointed out we had ones who dropped their jobs that they had and were full-time being supported by the rest of us uh, on campus so we took the ground in September of 1990 in October both of them went full-time so for the most part we've had our entire church life experience has been with ones that we were supporting full-time uh, but then in the fall of 94, Life and Truth was started, and, and later on, Life and Truth turned into Christians on Campus. Right. Uh, but during the time that I was in the, I was in the, the and then I had a, actually the first Bible study on campus in the Gospel of John. Uh, but this is, you know, eventually we had, we designed a logo and we had t-shirts, you know, and just 
as a way of saying, hey, we are, we are legitimate on campus. And even as part of my full-time service, because I actually went full-time myself uh, on campus, I also had a part-time job on campus called, and I was called the Rules Committee Chair in the, in the Student Life Department. And, and Student Life, they oversaw student government and every organization in that right state. And so that, that, that was a time where we had an excellent relationship with the administration at Wright State. They knew us, I had an office on campus, and it was just a really good way to serve, have more exposure, and I would say, at least for the beginning of our club experience at Wright State, have some legitimacy in the eyes of, of the campus administration. Right. It's really helpful history of the, the club uh, having that beginning, the precursor, life mm -hmm. and truth, mm -hmm. then eventually Christians on campus, mm -hmm. and then through that, meeting other students who are inspired by mm -hmm. your way of living the Christian life, wanting mm -hmm. to join you. At what point would you say you, I, you use this phrase, Tom, took the ground, where right. you Good. would have identified yourselves mm -hmm. as the church in Fairborn? Mm -hmm. I think I'll start, mm -hmm. you all can finish, mm -hmm. is that during this time, I want to make sure I understand that it wasn't, we weren't doing this in isolation. Uh, we were in fellowship with other churches, mm -hmm. uh, other churches in other cities, other states, and we had a sweet fellowship with other brothers and sisters in these, in these cities. And uh, so during this time, as we were growing here in Fairborn, mm -hmm. in pursuing fellowship, we were also going out mm -hmm. to visit and have fellowship, a sweet mm -hmm. fellowship with other believers in other cities, mm -hmm. other churches, mm -hmm. so that we always maintained a very healthy relationship that we're not doing something independent, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. our idea, mm -hmm. but our desire is to live the scriptural way to meet mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and to come together. But this was done in fellowship with other churches, and there were more mature brothers mm -hmm. in, in the Lord that we sought fellowship with, that gave us a lot of fellowship and yeah. covered us. Yeah. Um, so, and that was all over the United States. And we would go out and travel frequently mm -hmm. as students to mm -hmm. pursue that fellowship. Mm -hmm. So we had received a lot of fellowship. Uh, being young brothers, we realized that we were young and we need older, more experienced brothers in the truth, in the word, and in life experience to help us. Mm -hmm. So we got a tremendous amount of shepherding. So I want to caveat that mm -hmm. we weren't just doing our own thing as these young Christians who saw something in the word and we're doing our own thing. Right. This was done in coordination with many churches. Good you know, that was yeah. very helpful mm -hmm. and mutual nourishment. Mm -hmm. And that was very mutual. They came here, we went out. So that helped us a lot. So when we come into the club, there was a lot of things that we learned from other campus teams. Mm -hmm. And we, right, and we mm -hmm. brought that mm -hmm. in, which was very encouraging. Mm -hmm. I think one thing that was very important is that the matter of this matter of life and truth. Many campus Christian groups uh, that we saw are genuine believers and we love them. But we were not for getting numbers and having a social club. Mm -hmm. There's many things that you can do to gain people. We were not there to gain numbers of people and have different kind of watch parties to watch movies and do all kinds. We know how to gain people, mm -hmm. have a social activity like a fraternity or a social club. Mm -hmm. That is not what we were living. We want to live Christ. Mm -hmm. What is our cargo? What is our treasure that we want to give people? Mm -hmm. We don't want to cheat them with anything of the world. Yeah. We want to give them the genuine article, mm -hmm. something that has an eternal weight of glory. Mm -hmm. And that is what? The life of God and the truth of God, mm -hmm. which is unveiled in Christ himself, mm -hmm. unveiled in the scriptures, and experienced as the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So that was our living. That was our reality that we've seen, that mm -hmm. we've enjoyed. Mm -hmm. So we go to the campus. Like you said, we didn't have a large number of things that we did. Mm -hmm. We presented life and truth for you mm -hmm. to experience mm -hmm. the life and truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we understand that just as all these students, because we were all students when we got gained, mm -hmm. they're seeking the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All men are seeking God, whether they realize it or not mm -hmm. is the question. Mm -hmm. But actually, what they really are seeking is God himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a spirit in man, mm -hmm. and the breath of the Almighty gives it understanding. Every human being has a human spirit mm -hmm. with the, the unique capacity to seek God and long to experience God. Mm -hmm. The key is whether they've realized it or not. Right. We've had that realization in our experience right. each day and mm -hmm. it's growing in us. Mm -hmm. That's our heart for people on campus. So as it goes to life and truth and now mm -hmm. Christians on campus, that is still the premise mm -hmm. that we bring this living Christ, mm -hmm. the God of this universe, 
who's embodied in Christ and mm -hmm. realized as the life-giving spirit today, you can experience this one. Mm -hmm. You can touch this one in a simple way. But it's progressive and mm -hmm. needs to grow in you day by day. Mm -hmm. And that is our heart and our burden to care for these ones. Mm -hmm. But it's more than just spiritual. It goes into your human life because mm -hmm. not only is God divine, but he was a true human. He was a true man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So even in our spiritual life, even in our practical life, help with your studies. Mm -hmm. Help with your daily living, your diet. Mm -hmm. The proper living, as you take in God, your humanity of Jesus comes out and helps your living to become proper. Because mm -hmm. all of us have sin, we have weaknesses, mm -hmm. we have issues. Through taking in the Lord and having fellowship, the Lord's life rises up to what? To take care of these matters of sin, mm -hmm. these problems we can address and face. Yeah, you, now we have God himself as the real solution. Mm -hmm. It's like we take him into our boat mm -hmm. and he mm -hmm. becomes the solution to our issues. Mm -hmm. right. That's what people, every human being wants that. Mm -hmm. And God is that solution in our experience and in the truth and the word throughout history. So our burden is to bring that very matter in a living, right. genuine way to all the students on campus, just as we ourselves receive the same. Mm -hmm. Then I would pick up from that, that's certainly critical for the personal experience Absolutely. of the believer, mm -hmm. that they would have exactly what Kyle was mentioning. To pick up on your expression, the ground of the church, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that refers a little bit more to the corporate side. Mm -hmm. Personally, mm -hmm. we need individually mm -hmm. an mm -hmm. intimate, organic, living relationship with our Lord Jesus. Right. We need it, each one. Mm -hmm. Corporately, we need to bring that experience we have to mm -hmm. a place. Mm -hmm. Corporately, mm -hmm. a ground, you might, like, like Tom had used, mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. ground of the church. Mm -hmm. and, and for any building, you know, everyone's familiar with the, with the Lord speaking in, in Matthew uh, that he said, I will build my church mm -hmm. and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Right. So to build the church, you need to have the proper location or site or ground, mm -hmm. you could say. Right. Think about building a house. Mm -hmm. You have to identify the boundaries of a site or mm -hmm. the ground. Mm -hmm. That's right. The ground has to be proper. I can't build my house across a property line and have half of my house on someone else's property. Right. That would be illegal, right? right. right. But in a certain sense, that's happening today. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say, but in a certain mm -hmm. sense, that's happening. Mm -hmm. But we are clear from the scriptures right. that the ground of the church is the city in which the believers dwell. Mm -hmm. Very simple. Mm -hmm. So we're here in Fairborn. Every believer in Fairborn, God sees as mm -hmm. in the church in Fairborn. And so this, this, this is a critical aspect of the ground. And, and back to our campus club, I think a hallmark or a, an outstanding feature of our club was also the, the teaching of the truth in the word with Bible studies mm -hmm. weekly Absolutely. on the campus. And like Kyle said, there's a lot of social aspects of Christian clubs, but um, and there's an aspect we need socialization as human beings Absolutely. but the truth as taught through the scripture mm -hmm. in a living way uh on, on on the campus this became a, an outstanding feature and even other other christian clubs acknowledge uh, this this isn't our our our, our sorrowful scribe this was acknowledged by other clubs yes. why we hear that you teach the bible can we come that's why we're coming because we heard you're the you're the club that teaches the Bible. Right. You have Bible studies on, on the campus. Right. This, this, is, this is outstanding. You know, and even, even, as, even last night, we had a, a home meeting here in, in the home we're in right now, yes. and a young sister uh, told my wife, and she said, what I love is that when we sing hymns here, they're based on the scripture. They're based on the Bible. Mm -hmm. She was sometimes I hear a Christian song and I'm trying to figure out where is the, what they're saying, their words, where is that in the Bible? Mm -hmm. yeah, where is that in the Bible? Sure. Mm -hmm. But she said to my wife last night, I love how we sing the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a testimony, Absolutely. right? Mm -hmm. We have the best prayer book. It's the Bible. We have the best song book. 
It's the Bible. That's right. We have the best teaching. It's the Bible. Right. right? So this is an, an outstanding characteristic that, that I believe our clubs have offered, That's whether it's called Life and Truth, Christian mm -hmm. Students, Christians on Campus. That's We've had right. some reiterations of the name, mm -hmm. but the focus has never changed. Right. You know, this, right. is, this, is, this is really That's critical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. That being the case, I just had, uh, I, I guess, one, one other question I'd like to ask is, since all believers, we, all genuine believers have the same Bible, mm -hmm. same life of God, same mm -hmm. truth in God's word, um, and even the same capacity mm -hmm. to function as Absolutely. members of the body of Christ, what would you say made the difference um, to, for there to be even the need to, to develop Christians on campus as an outreach that teaches the Bible? Mm -hmm. um, what would you say... Uh, sorry, I'm having a hard time formulating the question. But, you know, there's so many different mm -hmm. yeah. uh, different Christian clubs. Mm -hmm. They're right. all genuine brothers right. and sisters yeah, in sorry. Christ. Correct. Right. Um, why Why was there the need to even have a club that mm -hmm. that is? Mm -hmm. uh, what What enabled you mm -hmm. to have this kind of understanding of the truth? Mm -hmm. This kind of way to open up the life that's in God's Word and, mm -hmm. and be able to minister it to mm -hmm. other believers where. They're responding, and they're saying, mm -hmm. yes, we want to be with you. We want to mm -hmm. hear the truth that you're opening up from the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, we do have a divine commission as believers <laughs> in Christ the Lord gave us <clears throat> to go announce this gospel, this good news to the nations. And that's really our commission as all believers in Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That we would, what, announce this Christ. Mm -hmm. This gospel means good news mm -hmm. to announce this. So as we have this enjoyment, right. uh, we are charged mm -hmm. to go mm -hmm. to every land, mm -hmm. right, every mm -hmm. nation, mm -hmm. to speak this Christ and to testify mm -hmm. right. of this Jesus. Mm -hmm. that you know, love. and I would add yeah. even to that that if we had the same vision as another Christian club that was on the campus, we would just join them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So right. we this is That's according right. according to our vision of what God is after with mm -hmm. regard to Christ and the church, mm -hmm. not just the personal experience of the Lord Jesus. That's mm -hmm. right. Every genuine believer has that. Yes. But that's not the complete that's the revelation the in the Bible. That's right. The mm -hmm. gospel includes the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, how is his bride going to be prepared mm -hmm. for the Lord Jesus to come back mm -hmm. and, and we have a wedding feast right there's right. no bride prepared right there's right. no body of christ built up right there's no church being built up right in essence really mm -hmm. and so this is the vision mm -hmm. that differentiates mm -hmm. uh you, i think that's where you're going with this question mm -hmm. what yeah. makes us you know what what, what compels us mm -hmm. what yeah. what supplies us right the, vi the vision Right. Yeah. We have right. a vision of Christ and the church. And, the church. Right. and this is a complete vision. Yes. According to the scripture, back mm -hmm. to the word. Mm -hmm. yes. We cannot do things traditional, the way mm -hmm. traditional uh, Christians have met. That's right. mm -hmm. Even to say mm -hmm. traditional Christianity. Mm -hmm. We're mm -hmm. not, not in a way of bashing or criticizing, right. but in a way of, of, of honesty. Right. In a right. way of genuine looking what yes. has been done mm -hmm. and has the Lord returned yet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, the Lord hasn't returned. Mm -hmm. Why hasn't the Lord returned? Because right. mm -hmm. yes. he doesn't have his testimony. Yes. Right. He doesn't have his bride prepared. Right. So right. this is our heart. Right. As Christians, our heart is the Lord would come back. Right. The right. Lord would have something to come back for. That's, right. Exactly. Right. That's our heart. Right. That's our heart. Right. Right. I think your response, John, helped me clarify the question I meant to ask is just that, um, because just as, as y'all have been sharing, we, you're not seeking as a club to do something that is going to develop just another denomination. That's You're not right. seeking to be something right. that is mm -hmm. separate mm -hmm. just to contribute to that's having right. more 31 mm -hmm. flavors of ice cream. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'd right. like to have something that's that actually right. could bring that's right. believers together right. and yet needing to be faithful to the truth mm -hmm. that's that right. you're practicing. That's right. So I, I feel like your response really is helping. Yeah. I, I see that, that there's a there's a vision to build mm -hmm. up the body of Christ. That's right. right. Um, that's right. To unite all the genuine believers on, yes. on, on one ground. Yes, right. that's right. I would even add, in a certain sense, our goal is not to build up Christians on campus. That's yes, exactly. that's right. And, and that sounds counterproductive to say, but if you're paying attention to what we're saying, mm -hmm. really our goal is God's, God's heart's desire, mm -hmm. God's, right. his, his eternal purpose. Mm -hmm. And so really our, our heart is 
uh, you know, to, 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 to gain vessels, as in gain human beings Absolutely. that are made to contain God, not only that they would receive the Lord's life, yeah. but they would be matured believers. Amen. They would come to the full knowledge of the truth and, and mature to the point where they would be part of the bride. Mm-hmm. They would be overcomers to help end this age mm-hmm. and bring the Lord back. Mm-hmm. And so on an individual level, if you ask me what attracted me and what made me sold out Absolutely. is the fact that when I was given, when I would go to, uh, when we would have gatherings and we would have an outline and I would look on an outline and see these points and see verse after verse after verse supporting the points, mm-hmm. I would realize all the, I'm, I'm among ones who just want to bring me more into the word, mm-hmm. who want to bring me more into the truth, right. and that I would get constituted with this truth and Absolutely. be brought into the truth, mm-hmm. and the truth would be brought into me. Right. And so on the one hand, it is a legitimate question that you ask because you go to a many college campuses around this country. Right. And when I was in the Bible training, I, I served on one campus in California. Mm-hmm. And, there at, and back in the mid-'90s, there were 30-plus uh, other Christian clubs so it's a legitimate question. What makes you different than anyone else? Right, right. Right. And, and I would have to say, well, you know, those other clubs, they have their, they have their goals, okay? They have their agenda. Mm-hmm. And, it, and I would say nothing at all t- against any of those dear believers. You right. know, all the believers out there, they're all, we receive them as genuine believers, and yeah, we absolutely. love them we as love believers. Them. We love yeah. them. You know, yeah. however, they may be in a situation, whether it's a club or in a, uh, a circle of other believers mm-hmm. that they have a different goal than mm-hmm. to match God's heart's desire. Absolutely. And it's just because the, the vision that they've received is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, the vision mm-hmm. by God's mercy, nothing of our boast mm-hmm. that we've received is to bring the Lord back, to be part of the bride, and to one day uh, to, to, to match his heart's desire. And to be used by him as dispensational instruments, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, and and that's what our heart that's what our heart is, and that and that's the burden of, of Christians on campus is to uh, to help bring ones into the church life to, to match that goal. Mm-hmm. This is a key point. This is a very key point. This matter of um, really bringing in to produce members of the body of Christ. Absolutely, because if you really look at what the gospel is, it's the body seeking. Interest. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. because the Lord doesn't want. We just don't want numbers in a club to grow. Mm-hmm. Our vision is to produce saved believers to be functioning members of the body of Christ. Amen. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> this collectively is what God wants. Right. Amen. And makes Him happy. Mm-hmm.